Today we are going to see how one single app can receive requests from multiple domains. So let's do it. Okay, uh, if I go to my Galaxy app here, you can see that I have two domains there. I just added the domain before because we already did for one domain, then I don't need to make this video a long video. But as you can see here, we have another domain here. That's the Brazilian name of this project. Como criar um app, that is the same as how to create an app. Okay, so this is the first part. Now I have my domain point to Galaxy, exactly the same as this one, and Galaxy support multiple domains, then I can just add another domain here, and that's it. But I want my app to behave in a different way if I have a different name. Why? Because I want, for example, to change the language. Then what we're going to do in this video is going to identify, like, how do I identify my domain? Like, how do I know what is the domain that the user typed? in the browser. Okay, so that's the first step. I have a few code that I would like to show you. Like, there are different ways to get this information in a Meteor app. One way is to extract this from the connection object. Like, I'm not going to do this right now. I'm going to do it in another way, but I just want to explain this because that's also a nice way to get it. We have this connection object, and this connection object is injected in the this variable inside publications and inside methods then if you need you can do like this get host from connection this dot connection then in the connection object you have like http headers and then you can get your host and then you can do some tests to make sure uh, the host has or hasn't today http https protocol and that's basically it and here this code also works in the client so if the connection is not here or if the http headers are not here you can also get just the window location that will be exactly what is here if you get like window dot location you also get this data and then you have also the host here okay so that's one way using like publications subscriptions but i don't want to do exactly that at least not now why because when Meteor first respond to my request, you can see Meteor generate this HTML here. Let's let's take a quick look. Let's clear here. Let's clear the cache, clear site data. Then I'm going to refresh. Let me go to the home page and refresh. If you see the first thing that Meteor returns is a document, as you can see here, a document. And then if I look to this document, I can see the HTML generated by Meteor. Of course, this is development. In production, Meteor is going to return just one JavaScript, but here is development, then Meteor is not like unifying all the code. But can you see these meta tags? Then what I want to do, I want to inject the language in my meta tags based on my domain. If the user access how to create an app, it's going to be English. If the user access como criar um app, it's going to be Portuguese. Then that's what you want to do. But why I'm explaining this? Because this is not enough. Because this part runs after this HTML is produced. Because then Mitchell returns the first HTML, then the JavaScript code connects to the server, and then we have a WebSocket connection with publications and methods and whatever you want to send in the WebSocket. Then I want to do before this step. Then what I need to do here? I will remove this code because I don't want this code. And I'm going to also show you another code. This is from Bmark. It's one of the apps that, that I have. And you can see there is this sync object. And the sync object is coming from here. I'm not going to explain all this code, of course. But that's nice for you to know that it's possible to generate multiple apps with Meteor or multiple domains with the same app because Bmark is also a white label. Then when the user access a specific URL, the user receives a different app. If you look to like bmark.com, it's going to return our marketplace. If you look to Forneria 
84.com.br, it's going to return a different app. But in the back end, it's basically the same. Like, do you see this, the button yellow? If you go, oh, here I don't have star, but the button will be orange. Then we have like different behaviors, all because it's using a different domain. But it's the same app in the back end. But here it's simple, right? We just want to inject one meta tag. But then what, you, what Meteor offers? You need to have this on page load. Then I need to add a package like server render. Then I'm just going to copy this code. I am going to have, uh, put this in this folder here. I'm going to call SSR. SSR means server side render because that's going to be rendered from the server. Then I, I need to have this package. I don't think I have this package. You can also check the package that you have here, but I don't have this package. Then I'm going to add nature add server render. Then this package provides this nice function that will be called when your app is loading, not in the client, in the server before the HTML is sent back to the client. Then I'm just going to copy this like huge code, but I don't want everything. I just want this part here. I just want to get from my sync object this part. Okay? You can read more about this and how this implementation works here. Uh, but that's basically it. Like, I have a try catch here because if this code fails, it's going to break my page load. Then I think it's better to have a try catch around here to avoid any problems because. I prefer to have like the wrong language than to have a broken app. That's why I have this here. Okay, now I have my URL here. Let's just log for now and let's see if this is working as we expect. Then my server is restarting and I'm going to refresh. And as you may be expected, this is not going to affect anything. Why? Because I need to import this file. Otherwise, this function is not going to be executed and then this is not going to have any effect. Then I need to affect my app. Then I can import this here. I can even put like maybe here and I need to do like it's in the infra folder and then inside this directory I have the SSR. Okay, now this code is going to be evaluated because it's going to be imported. And if I refresh, ta -da, I have the URL here, okay? Then I have the host name, I have everything here, I have the path name, I have the href here. We have a, a lot of things here. Uh, let's just check, like, if you see bmark here, we get the URL, and then you get the path name, and you, you probably are getting from the header, like, what is the correct host name. Then, like, can you see this header code here? We can also have some settings to fake it, but I'm going to teach you in a different way how to, to test in a local browser, okay? Then I'm just going to, I'm not going to use this here because I don't need it. Then I'm going to, oh, this is just like a protocol check. Let's extract this code. I'm just using like extract function, shortcut here, get host. I don't want to return, I just want to get my host here. Okay, I get the header from the sync, I send the header here, and then I just get my host with my protocol. Uh, let's see, let's log this out. It's going to refresh, and then if I refresh this page, okay, I have my host here. Then I'm not going to go into details here because I don't want to have a long video, but I'm, if you just inspect these objects from each other, it's basically like a, it's basically the same as an express object for the connection. Then you can understand what's going on here. Okay, I don't want to have this comment here. Then I can get this. I don't want to have this comment as well. Okay, I know my host, but how can I simulate when I have a different domain? Then I have this file here and you have if you're using a Unix system. If you're using Windows, I'm not sure how to do this, sorry. But like in a Unix system, you can do these mappings here. You can even see the Forneria when I was developing the Forneria one that I provide in the example. We're using Bmark and Forneria. It is here yet, but you can create like some alias here. Then you can just, oh, I opened this by mistake. Then you can just use these URLs and let's see what happens. 
it's localhost. So if I replace my localhost by this, it's going to be the same. It's going to work, but can you see? It's a different name now because now I'm requesting using a different host. And that's what you want. Now you can test it. You can also put com criar um app. Can you see? Then that is going to work in the same way on Galax. Then as what I'm, I want to do here is very simple. I just want to inject a meta tag that I'm going to, to make up this meta tag. I'm just going to copy code from Bmark because Bmark injects a lot of meta tags. Like it's the same as the sync. You just use the sync again here and you can append it to the head. And I'm going to put, I don't know if that is a official meta tag for language. Oh, sorry, not just language, meta tag, HTML. Maybe that is a correct way to specify this. Yeah, it's link. Content link. Oh. It's content link or just link? I'm not sure. Oh, it's for HTML is content link and for meta tag is probably this. I'm going to use this. Okay. I don't know if that's the right way, but we are going to use it. I, I also want to have this like this break line. So it looks good when I have the final HTML because it's going to be appended. And of course, I think this double quotes are wrong. Maybe because of, I just copied. it. These are wrong as well. And then I'm going to use template string here to replace by a custom one. Then get language by host. And I can send the host. I can also use this to create a function for me. And okay, if the host includes how to create, let's put the Portuguese one here, como criar um app. So if it's not the Portuguese one, it's going to be English, okay? I'm going to use PTBR and otherwise I'm going to use ENUS. Yep. Okay, then let's see if this is working. I'm going to refresh again and I need to see that this made a tag in the head. Uh, content link, PTBR, can you see? And now how to create an app, English. And of course, if I just do this, it's going to be English because my default language is going to be English. But if I, if the request contains como criar um app in Portuguese, it's going to be in Portuguese. Of course, this language is not affecting anything yet, but let's do this in the next video. But now we know how to affect this. You can imagine in like, if you have any color and tag like this, you could change the color that's going to change the result. That's why when you use like B mark in the cell phone, like the nav bar is going to change the color if you are on B mark or if you are in a custom white label, then you have different colors and we are doing this in the exact same way. Then now you know how to customize your first HTML with Meteor, use your domain to make decisions. In the next video, probably we are going to write a code to detect this in the client, or you can even detect this in a different way in the GraphQL calls. But I believe I'm going to detect this in the client and I'm going to send the language in the client all the time, because then I can also save a cookie where the user could change the language. Because maybe the user doesn't know that you have two domains, or maybe you should just ignore that. And when the user clicks change the domain, I don't know. I think it would be nice to have like a language selector here then like the domain is just the first way to define it, but the user could overhide it. I, I think that would be better. I don't know, Let's, let me know in the comments what is the best option, just to follow the domain or to also allow the user to change the language. And later, of course, you need to use the language to define what's going to be displayed. And I have a few ideas about that and I tell you in the next video about it. See you. Oh, don't forget, subscribe and comment below like, do you think you should have this toggle or not? And subscribe, send to your friends. And now you know how to create like a lot of domains, a lot of different apps using a single code. See you. Bye.